All right, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of The Daily Crow. I am Chris Phillips of the Spurs Up Show coming to you live. It's good to be back. Obviously, I haven't talked to you guys since Monday, so excited to come back. Talk some Gamecocks basketball mainly. Obviously, Jake Bentley coming back as well, so we're going to touch on that. But let's start with the basketball game. Gamecocks travel to Gainesville uh, to take on the Florida Gators, one of their eastern rivals. Uh, let's start with the best bet in this one. A little bit different with the best bet. And before I get into that, I've got something to say about our sponsor. But different about the best bet. I'm actually going to start keeping up with it, keeping track. We can keep a record, see how much money I'm making you guys or see how much money I'm losing you guys. But before we get into everything, obviously everything we do is brought to our friends by our friends over at SeatGeek. Just because football season's over doesn't mean you can go buy tickets. Use the promo code SPURSUP. Get $20 off your first purchase after you download the SeatGeek app. It's the best ticket buying app by far. Uh, they've got a rating system where they actually rate the tickets from red means you're getting a really crappy deal to green means you're getting a steal means you're getting a really good deal on the tickets. Use the promo code again, Spurs Up. You're going to get 20 bucks off your first purchase. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of stuff going on. You've got college basketball, the NFL playoffs are in full swing. Um, there's concerts, events, obviously, in 2019, anything you can think of. Uh, so, again, download the SeatGeek app. Use the promo code Spurs Up. That's S P U R S U P to get 20 bucks off. Your first purchase, I mean, if you don't use the promo code, I guess you just don't like saving money. Again, S-P-U-R-S-U-P, Spurs up. Save 20 bucks. Download SeatGeek. All right, let's get into a best bet for this one. Um, Gators Oven is a 13-point favorite. They said 11.5-point favorite right now. Um, Over-under set at 100, uh, 133.5. You know, I don't know. For this one, for some reason, I know Florida's not a ranked team, but they're obviously very, very good. We're going to touch on that in a second. But I actually like the Gamecocks to cover here, plus 11 and a half. I just, I, it has a feeling to me that South Carolina, they're not playing great basketball, obviously. I mean, they got a win against North Greenville, which is a D2 opponent. It doesn't mean anything. But I think for this one, I like South Carolina to come out fired up. The first conference game of the season, I know they're on the road, but I, I think 11 and a half is just a little too much. I know it opened at 13. I think there's a reason that it's gone down to 11 and a half. I got the Gamecocks covering plus 11 and a half. Um, I don't know. I just think South Carolina is going to come out and make this a really tough game, competitive game. I feel like South Carolina always seems to play Florida close, too. I mean, South Carolina split with Florida last season when the Gamecocks were about as inconsistent as they are right now, I would say. So I like South Carolina to cover that plus 11 and a half. As far as the game's concerned, Florida's still, even though they're not ranked, Florida's a very, very good basketball team. Um, they're right there on the outside receiving votes. They've got some good wins this season. I think they actually beat West Virginia. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think overall for this game, it's going to be very interesting to see for South Carolina. I think this is almost sort of a measuring stick type game field just to kind of see how this SEC season is going to go. Is it going to be? Because, listen, nobody thinks South Carolina is going to go on some run and make the conference tournament or probably even or make the uh, NCAA tournament or even make like the NIT. But I think this is going to give us kind of a gauge of, all right, is this going to be a team that battles and scraps and maybe can pull an upset here or there, can you know give some of these better teams trouble? Because the SEC schedule is very, very good. The SEC is very good this year at basketball. Um, is it going to be one of those teams or – is it going to be a team where it's just going to be a really long season? We're going to see a lot of blowouts and not a lot of fight from this club. Uh, I think overall it obviously starts and it, it, it begins and ends with Chris Silva. I know Frank Martin talked about needing to get better guard play. I think South Carolina has needed to get better guard play since Cinderia Stormwell left. But it starts and ends with Chris Silva. Uh, I think the Gators, I do have them getting the win. I don't think South Carolina is going to go into games and will pull out the win. And let's be honest, we haven't seen anything from this South Carolina team that would, in, in, you know, uh, tell you that they're going to go in there and pull this up. Said I've got the Gators winning this. We'll say we'll say something uh, along the lines of seventy-seven to seventy. So would hit the over, but again, I like the plus eleven and a half more than anything. But I've got the Gators winning this one. Again, Gamecocks keep it within the number, but seventy-seven to seventy. I think South Carolina battles hard. It might. I expect it to be really, really close in the first half. I might even see like a tie game after the first half. But I think Florida is just too good. They'll pull away. And again, until somebody steps up for South Carolina. Um, we haven't seen anything that's going to tell you they're going to get the win. Need better guard play, better shooters to make free throws. Yeah, I mean, you've got to make your free throws in games like this, obviously. I mean, South Carolina hasn't been great in that. And, again, the Gamecocks have needed better guard play, in my opinion, for a lot since Cinderius since left. I mean, there has been nobody to really step up. I know they want Trey Campbell to kind of be that guy, be more aggressive, step up and be that dude. I'm just not sure if he is that guy. So we'll have to wait and see. It should be a lot of fun. Um Moving into Jake Bentley, obviously announcing his return to the Gamecocks in 2019 for his senior season, announced it yesterday uh, on social media. Um, I think it's a huge plus for South Carolina. I know there was some mixed emotions. I, I, 
I think it's funny because the rational fan, if you take a step back and forget about the Virginia game, forget about the second half of Akron, and you really look at this team and what it means for this team that he is coming back, it's a huge, huge, huge boost. I mean, I don't think anyone really thought that it was a serious – like, I was never – convinced he was going to the NFL. I mean, I just don't – I didn't see – I had heard some rumblings that if he was going to go, this would be a good class to go in because the quarterback class was weak. But I just – I never felt like he was going to the NFL. But I think it's huge that South Carolina gets Jake Bentley back. I mean, you have the talented Ryan Holinsky coming in, but he's going to get a year now to kind of be groomed under Jake Bentley, learn some things, learn the system, learn the speed of college football. And I just think Jake Bentley – you know, as much crap as we've given him, Jake Bentley's like being in a bad relationship. You know what I mean? Some days you love him, some days you hate him, and Jake Bentley has somehow found a way to suck me back in after he's let me down time after time after time. I think Jake Bentley could have a good senior season. I mean, I really do. I think he's caught an unfair amount of the uh, the brunt at times, for sure. I mean, I've given him my fair share of criticism. That's what I, without a doubt. But I think 2019 could set up. All of the bad memories of Jake Bentley could be erased if he goes out and has a good 2019. They're going to need him to, obviously, with that schedule. We all know how daunting that schedule is, but... I think if Jake Bentley, if they can find some sort of running game, and obviously there's there's commotion about there being a change at the running backs coach, which uh, I think would be welcomed at this point. But I think Jake Bentley can go out have a really good 2019. I think it's a huge plus for your team. As, as hard as the schedule is, I think the last thing you wanted to happen for this program is going to 2019 with no answer at quarterback, with, with two unproven guys. I mean, Dak Joyner and Holinsky, one that's never played before, and one that is a redshirt freshman that played in basically one game. Um, so I think Jake Bentley coming back is huge. Also from a leadership standpoint, obviously everybody loves him in the locker room. And again, he's been a great ambassador for the University of South Carolina, but definitely on the field. I think it's a huge thing for South Carolina that he come back. Um, and I'm glad he's coming back, honestly. Again, I know there's going to be times where you hate him. Again, it's like a bad relationship. One day you love him, one day you hate him. You got to learn to live with him, though. And right now he's he... You know, I know we hear he's your best option. I, I'd be interested to see how short the leash is because what I'm saying right now that I'm glad he's back, if he doesn't play up to it, obviously I think Ryan Holinsky is going to be there to push him. But I also think the competition is going to help him a lot. I think we saw that after Michael Skarnecchia came in and there was a bunch of talk about him taking his job. I thought Jake Bentley played his best football when he knew his job was in jeopardy. And listen, some guys, some athletes, some people respond to that kind of pressure, their backs against the wall. They respond to that type of adversity. So I'm really excited just to see – because I think the Holinsky and Joyner competition behind him is either going to make him a better player or it's going to break him because he, he has to get better. He, he doesn't have any other option. He can't go into 2019 and throw 14 picks again. It just it just cannot happen. So, I mean, the guy's obviously got a chance to set the all-time career passing yards record. I think he's like 26 or 2,700 away. Needs eight more, excuse me, eight more touchdowns to set the – career passing touchdowns record he's pretty close I, mean, I think it's seven or eight wins away from being the all-time winningest quarterback at South Carolina I think he's second in completion percentage I mean you know for as much you know crap like I said as we give Jake there's a lot of awards that we could see Jake Bentley we could see him on the stadium I mean we could see him on the turnstiles his name up there um so <clears throat> again I think his senior season he could be saving the best for last again he's got to prove it on the field I know we, it, we he's got to prove it on the field but I think it's a huge plus for South Carolina. I think it's a huge boost to get Jake Bentley back. As much much criticism we give him, as much as we get tired of hearing the same things over and over, that he's the best option in this anatomy. I think right now he's by far the best option for this team and the best option going into what is going to be a really tough 2019 schedule. Um, other than that, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Obviously, 1 o'clock, the Army All-American Bowl will be watching Cam Smith and Ryan Holinsky go at it. Cam Smith playing for the East team. Ryan Holinsky playing for the West squad. That should be a lot of fun to watch those two future Gamecocks ball out. I mean, Zach Pickens was very impressive tonight. Everything we had heard all week from those guys has been absolutely fantastic, especially Cam Smith. That's a guy that you have to be really, really excited for. I think it's going to make that secondary absolutely lethal next to J.C. Horn. Um, other than that, I'm not really going to touch on what happened yesterday with another – South Carolina media outlet. All, all I can say is this, you're either with us or you're against us. So it's the Spurs Up show versus everybody, and that's completely fine with me, but you're either with us or against us. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Probably will catch you tomorrow to recap everything that happened with the game, with the Army All-American Bowl and the game tonight. Be sure to go download SeatGeek. Use the promo code SPURSUP. Other than that, if there's no other questions, uh, appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks.